All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to stream. Hi. Hello. How are we all doing? How is the vibe for today? Yes, yes. Halfway through October. Halfway through Spooky Month. Hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. How are we doing? How is the vibe? How are we vibing today? How is the energy? How are we feeling the energy today? Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Welcome in, everybody. Today, what we are going to be doing, today we are going to be drawing some tattoos. We're going to be drawing tattoos on characters. The vibe is EB, you say. Um, today, we are going to be drawing some tattoos on characters. Um, what I'm going to be going over today is just kind of how to lay them on the body. Um, more so. So, like, how you would put them on the body rather than, like, actually designing a tattoo. Um, so we're going to be talking about how to wrap them around different parts of the body, um, how to place them on places, and, like, how to think when we are placing down tattoos. How am I? I'm, I'm, I'm EP. <laughs> I, I'm, I just taught two classes. I am pretty sleepy. Um... My other class woke me up a little bit. My second class woke me up a little bit, but I am still EP, so do not mind me. Um, hello, Naomi. Thank you. Um, but again, before we get begin, before we get going, if you did not know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. We art nerds have to get stick together. So be sure to check out the links to our social media description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. Yes, lots of, lots of fun little things you can check out as a YouTube member and as a Patreon member. Man, before we get on to the actual illustration portion today, can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> before we get to the actual illustration portion today, we have our submissions. We have art submissions. Oh, why is it midway through? Oh no, oh no, spoilers. Um... Submissions. We have the art submissions for today. If you'd like to submit for future art submission portions, be sure to check those out on our Discord, um, where you can submit things based on the theme of the month. The theme this month is like it's spooky month. <laughs> it's October. Um, so first off, we have. Oh wait, where's my list? I totally didn't pick these right before stream. Uh, first off, we have Lexicon. Lexicon who submitted this lovely little piece here. Um, I love how soft it is. I've seen Lexicon's work before. Um, I love how soft it is. I love the, the pastel colors. Love the anatomy of the character. Very, very cute. The bright green hair really... Like, the bright mint hair really, really pairs well with the darker, more warm tones of the of the purple and the orange in the dress. Very, very Halloween-y. Uh, only triadic colors, and they work super, super well together. Um, beautiful work. Thank you so much for submitting. This next piece is by Morishige in the Discord. I wish I could zoom in on this. This one is beautiful. It did have a spoiler warning over it, um, but it is it is gorgeous. It is traditionally done, looks like. It's all, it's all in paper. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Really, really detailed, heavy, very graphic line work. It is gorgeous. It's it's very, very fun to look at. Um, very, very, very Junji Ito reminiscent um, in the way that these lines are are placed. It's very, very lovely. It, he really, they, or this individual, they really took advantage of the principle of if there's too much detail, there's no detail at all. Um, and because there's so much line detail, um, it doesn't feel too busy because that's the level that we're setting it at. And everything still is, you're able to tell what everything is. You can see a skull in there. You can see the mouth. You can see the eyes. Um, it's all so busy, but it's busy to the point where I can still recognize different pieces from each other. It's very, very well done. Excellent. Well, well done. This next piece is by, I think this is Onion Tunes, right? Yes, this is Onion Tunes in the Discord. Another spider character. 
Um, we love a good spider character. Again, I can't zoom in on this, but there's a lot of detail in that face. Really fun way of handling that spider without it being mixing it with a person. Um, I like the... <laughs> I like the... Instead of creating the, the back thorax, uh, this person... Uh, they took the two legs and split them off. And I think that that's really, really fascinating. Um, really interesting way to do that anatomy. Um, very, very well done. Thank you so much for submitting. This next one is by Ray. Ray and the Discord. Super, super cute. We're really getting two sides of a coin. <laughs> We're really getting both sides of the coin um, with these submissions. This is very, very sweet. I love the little black cat character. love the witchy character. Um, really, really fun line work. Really, really fun character designs all around. Um, yeah. Thank you all so, so much for... Or thank you for submitting. <laughs> There's one more. Um, this last one is by Galactic Firefly in the Discord. They submitted two separate designs. I actually liked this one more. Um, the Avatar of Murder. Um, beautiful design. I love, I really love cold kind of colors and using the, the, the very icy blue with the white and the stark contrast with that really, really deep, um, uh, I believe it's a deep blue, even though it's, it's meant to look like black, it is a deep blue. Um, it's a really, really, he they're really heavily contrast with each other and this silhouette is really fun. Um, this pose is so lanky and so gross. It's really, really well done. Um. I like the other one too, but I think that this one spoke to me more. <laughs> um, gorgeous work. Um, it's your uni assignment design. Very nice. You did a great job. Um, it's a beautiful, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful looking. <laughs> it's, it, there's not really much else I can say. Um, <coughs> I love those. I love those legs. I love that leg design. Um, so twisty, so fluid. Well done. But all right. Thank you all so, so much for submitting, all five of you. If you want a chance to, and for everybody else who has already submitted for the weeks, if you would like a chance to submit for future weeks, please join the Discord. <coughs> oh my god. Sorry, I drank water and went down the wrong way. Thank you all so much for submitting. And if you'd like a chance to submit and be featured on our Saturday art submissions in the future, please join the Discord and you can submit your work over there. And either myself or Josh, and I believe Iggy also re reviews them now. Perhaps. Perhaps one of us will review your submissions. Alright! Yes! <coughs> Alright. So again, like I mentioned, um, today is going to be a request stream, so once we actually get to drawing the tattoos, we will be... I'll be taking suggestions from you guys for what tattoos we're going to be putting on a character. Um, but before then, I'm going to give you guys a very, very quick sort of lesson on how to apply tattoos to the body. It's really not that difficult. Um, I don't want to spend too long on it because we're going to be drawing a full character and then we're going to be drawing tattoos on top of that. So it's probably going to take a while. Um, so I want to make this lesson really, really fast. So applying tattoos. Tattoos to the body. So the number one thing that we want to think about was we want to think about the body as if it's made of cylinders. Right? Think of the body as if it's made of cylinders. Right? When we are applying a tattoo... The arm is not a flat surface. Right? So if we are going to... Let's say that we have like a heart or a, a, a heart tattoo. Right? The arm is not a flat surface. The arm, the leg, the torso, it is not a flat surface. It is a curved surface. So what we want to envision instead is as if we are applying a tattoo onto something more simple. Like a cylinder, right? It is wrapping around this form by comparison to just lying flat on top of it. 
right? And you go, Jesse, it's uh, an arm is more complicated than a circle. There's so many muscles. There's so many things you need to wear. Not yet. <laughs> Don't think about that just yet. The main thing you want to focus on is having that wrap around something as simple as a cylinder. The simpler you envision first, the easier, the more complicated things will be in the future, right? So if you think about it as a cylinder to begin with, you go, okay, well, I understand that that's how it's going to be curving. So in the future, working on more muscles does not become that crazy. You'll probably never have to worry about it going over this crazy amount of muscles anyway, unless the person is like as jacked as like this. Right? Unless the person is built like a, like a show, like a, like a body, a showpiece bodybuilder, right? You're never really going to have to deal with, um, the tattoos going on as crazy as that, right? If we just took an average person's shoulder, just kind of like an average shoulder, average arm. These arms are already curved. Right? And they're very simply curved. It's not like it's the craziest thing in the world that you need to deal with. Yeah, there are some muscles and there are some things that you need to worry about. But all in all... It is not the worst thing in the world. Vision it. Just like a cylinder. A way that I personally like to envision this is imagine if you had to overlay a grid on top of something. Imagine if you had to overlay a grid on top of the art. Let me show you a donut first, though. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to wrap kind of circles all around. It's as if we put on a bunch of rubber bands or rings all around a donut. If you can envision that with me. Right? We're kind of wrapping this tube in rubber bands, in rings. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add rings sort of vertical-wise onto the same donut. Right? So this kind of grid that we have placed on here is no different than the grid that we can envision on an arm. Right? Wrap it around with... We're, I'm using an arm because it's just the easiest example right now. Wrap the arm around with rings. And then vertical-wise, we add that so we have that grid. Two things that we're going to want to... People who are larger, I saw somebody comment about that. People who are larger, it's the exact same principle. There is no difference. We are simplifying, right? We're not thinking about the muscle structure. We're not thinking about the fat. We're not thinking about anything like that. We are thinking about the simplified shapes of the individual. It does not matter what form, you, what, what size you are. <laughs> we are all made of cylinders. We are all made of cylinders and, and prisms, technically. Um, but we're not going to be thinking about prisms because that doesn't help us with tattoos. Um... What if you're drawing on paper? It's the exact same thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why that would be any different. Um, this isn't necessarily something you have to draw on every single limb. You just have to envision it, right? This is me giving you a visual for how you want to think about that. A couple of things you want to know, though, is that when things... Round an edge... <laughs> More compressed. When things round an edge, thank you. Hi, M. When things round an edge, they become more 
compressed. When things round an edge, they become more compressed. What does that mean? So let's envision like a barrel for a second. Let me draw a barrel for a moment. And we have all of our planks, right? Planks that are going around the edge will look pretty close together. And as they come towards the center, they'll space back out once more. So you notice the spacing between each plank gets wider and then smaller as we get to each edge. This creates the illusion of something getting, of something being curved. It creates the illusion of something being wrapped around the edge. So the same thing can be said for a tattoo. Right, so let's say we have like um let's just draw a design over here. Let's pretend that this person has like a dragon tattoo or whatever. This is gonna be the most basic dragon tattoo in the world because I don't want to spend forever on this. This is something that I would have wanted when I was like 13. <laughs> right? Let's say we have something like that, right? Whoops, oopsie. If I was just gonna place this on here, right? That's not enough. Right? That's not that's not good enough. If I was just to like, you know, place this on here call it a day yeah man right it feels like it is a flat surface right it doesn't really feel like it is wrapping around that arm so digitally if you're working digitally you can very easily alter this with the grid right so the edges around the arm parts where it go around the arm will be a lot flatter my comparison to the middle and because it is also a curved arm i don't want to curve this around the edge this isn't the cleanest example <laughs> of this technique um but you kind of notice it getting a bit thinner here a little bit thicker here right by comparison to the original right you can kind of see it molding to the curve of this arm if i spent more time on it it would look better than this i promise You just have to think of that arm as a curved object, not a flat one. The grid is equivalent to distorting something in CSP, right? Yes, exactly. That's the tattoo I got when I was younger. Well, I was such an edge lord. I think it's just the one that everybody who was younger would have wanted. Um, I really want a specific tattoo right now, but I'll talk about that later. All right, but that's generally what you want to think of when you're placing a tattoo. How you design them really is completely up to you. Like there is no such thing as a quote unquote tattoo style of course there are better places to put down a tattoo there are um you know like very classic quote-unquote tattoo styles i suppose like if you go like tribal or neo trad or whatever right those are like the very common sort of tattoo looks but does that mean that you have to get them in those styles no of course not i will never get a tattoo in a neo trad or a tribal style um i very love i very much love illustrative tattoos so i love them done a, in more unique styles um specific to said artist um and it's 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 really up to you however you want to design any tattoo honestly um the things that most people just need to know are how they are placed on the body right how they will be placed how they will lay down on any part of the body and how you actually design them is quite literally up to you is there a tool like this in csp i don't know my platform that well yeah yeah it should be i'm pretty sure you guys just have like a grid uh like a grid warp i just don't know what it's called 
Um, I need to switch paint programs. I don't have that advanced of a grid tool. Yeah, grid tools I know are both on Photoshop and CSP. I'm pretty sure that's on Procreate as well. I know Procreate has Liquify, so Liquify works just as well. Um, but the grid kind of confines the form to a section, so it's a little bit easier to work with. Back tattoos are cool, yeah. All right. Thought it was a clip of live stream because I joined right at the important part. Nah, nah, this is live. Yep, it will be saved to YouTube. Every single stream gets saved to YouTube afterwards. I 100% didn't know Photoshop had this feature, so thank you. Yeah, if you just hit V, um, click on one of the anchor tools, it should be up here. So you can turn that. Or you can right... Uh, oh my god. You can move it and then right click. Uh, and then free transform. Right? Free transform? No, it's warp, isn't it? Yeah, warp. You can... Woo! <laughs> the grid is just nice because it confines it. Completely forgot about liquefy. Now you know the knowledge. Yes, you do. All right. Anybody have any additional questions? Anything you want me? Anything else you want to ask? Most, ta most tattoos are literal work of art. Those realistic ones are insane, though. I could imagine the pressure of having one chance to get it right. I, realistic tattoos are crazy. I'm like, I'm not one for realistic tattoos. I'm like, if I was ever gonna, I, I like stylized, ta stylized tattoos more than realistic ones. I just like the look. Um, but realistic tattoos are crazy. Like, can I book my Jesse original tattoo appointment? I mean, I want to get into tattooing. Um, what do you mean? Why? Why for what? <laughs> All right. Let's get into the illustrative portion then. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time just drawing a character and we can just chat and then we will get into the actual tattoo portion. So should you do amazing as tattoo artist? Yeah, yeah, no, that's literally what my next route is. <laughs> that's that, like I'm thinking of going into tattooing. Like I'm, I'm gonna start applying to apprenticeships at some point. Oh, why don't you like them realistic? I just have a... I really love stylized work. Um, I think I just see realistic tattoos so often and I'm like, I'm just kind of bored of the look. So I'm like, if I were to get a tattoo, I really want it in a way, like stylized in a way that's a little bit more original. Um, there's one artist that I really want a tattoo from. Oh my God. What's her name? There she is. Adela, I really want a tattoo from this person. I think that her work is gorgeous. And like, I love this style so much. Like it's so, the line work is so interesting. The style is so fun. Um, it's just, I love, I love tattoos when they feel more illustrative. I love illustration. And I think that just getting something that feels more unique on you is just more interesting. <laughs> As another artist, uh, God, can I find them? Uh, I know the name. I just can't say it out loud. There we go. Hokey Pokey. <laughs> I love this artist too. Um, this artist also has a really fun, very cute style. Um, I want my first tattoo from this person. Um, but like, you know what I mean? Like I want something that's a little bit more illustration based. I don't, I don't really gravitate towards realism. I gravitate more towards something that has a bit more, a bit of a, like, I want every style to have a personality to it. And I think that realism all just kind of rings the same in my eyes. So I'm like, I want something that feels in like more personal in a weird way. It's very cute. No, it's it's super cute. It's, that's, that's the kind of vibe that I wanted <laughs> for some of them. When it comes to tattoos, do you recommend we go simpler versions of them, even the more detailed ones? It's up to you. Hello, Troll Fox. How are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Hugo 
arts tattoos. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very anime style. Yeah. <laughs> if I was ever to get like an anime tattoo of like a like a I would want a manga panel. I don't want like the actual characters from the the show. I really want a Junji Ito panel on me. <laughs> I really want the panel from the end of the enigma of Amigata Fault. I really want the the ending panel where you see the the hole in the side of the a hole in the side of the fault that's like shaped like this spaghettiified human. Like oh, that's what I want on my body. <laughs> Amazing panel tattoos. Yeah. There's an artist that's near me who does really good um, panel tattoos. So I'd, I'd love to get one from her as well. Most of my tattoos that I want, I really want unique ones. I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna copy any manga panels. I don't wanna copy any anime stills. I'm like, I want, I want the art. I want to give the artist a concept and I want the artist to go nuts. I'm like, I don't want them. I don't wanna go to an artist and give them exactly what I want. I want to say like, hey, this is the concept that I want. I want you to do something that matches your style, you know? Because I'm like, as an artist, I understand the pain of somebody coming up to you and being like, hey, I want exactly this. I don't want any differences. It's like, I'm giving you exactly what I want. And like, yeah, it's going to be in your art style, but like, I want it exactly like this. And I'm just like, man, <laughs> like no design elements, nothing. You're not leaving me anything. So I'm like, especially with tattoo artists, like a lot of them, especially the illustrative ones have like rules where they're like, hey, if you're gonna commission me for a tattoo, um, I'm gonna be working in my style. You're not allowed to give me things that I have to copy, kind of thing, right? As a tattoo artist, like, it is, if, especially if you're working in a bigger studio, like, you may have to just, like, copy the look of something, but I'm like, I want, I want the artist to go crazy. I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to step on their toes. I like to I like to seek out my artists and then respect their work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the best tattoos are created by the artist that does them. Exactly, exactly. I'm like my first tattoo. Like I actually don't have any tattoos. Can you believe it? Um, but I really want one. Um, and I like it's. I'm like on the way to getting one. And like my my first tattoo that I really want, I want it on my inner arm. Um, I'd love like a little panel. And it's like a little elephant. Just kind of in the corner here. That's sort of sitting, like the little front feet up here. And then like a speech bubble that's like this too shall pass. I want that. This is what I want. <laughs> this is my first tattoo, something like that. Um, I have a plushy elephant that I've had since I was like two, so I want like it has just been a comfort for my whole life. So I'm like I really want that as a tattoo because fabric doesn't last forever. So if anything were to ever happen to her, then I would have a tattoo. You know, like that's what I want for my first one. Like I'm I'm putting a lot on my first tattoo, and then after that I'm like I'm gonna get flash tattoos. I don't care. <laughs> I'm like I love flash tattoos. I'm like the designs are so cool. There's one artist who has this really, these really sick slash tattoos of like bugs, and I would love like a bug tattoo. <laughs> I've heard that getting those first tattoos are painful. Yeah, because you're not used to the pain, right? Uh, my partner who has several tattoos, he's saying that like the, it kind of feels more like a like a bad sunburn in a lot of areas, but it is different for everybody though. That's the problem.
What are flash tattoos? So a flash tattoo is when the artist comes up with a design and you can just buy it and put it on your body. So it's not something that you request. You can make slight alterations like size or placement or maybe color. Um, but overall, the flash design is something that they create and then you can request to put on you. Um, still costs money, but it is significantly cheaper than a custom. Because they're not designing anything, right? Yeah, how much pain there is also depends on your body. On where on your body. Yes, exactly. Cat scratch on a sunburn, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. People have said cat scratches before. People have said sunburns. Mm-hmm. Cartoon character with people saying breaking news every time a major world event happens you add to the list that's really funny um yeah i kind of wanted like one of my arms to just have a bunch of like picture frames or like because like i'd want a bunch of different artists and then each artist it would be like i'd like have a custom tattoo in mind but it would have to be inside of a frame so it looks like a gallery on my arm like that was an idea i had but i don't think i'm gonna go and go through with it but I might. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe it'll be on my leg instead. Hello. Thought flash tattoos were the ones where you shine a UV light on a glows. It's like flashing. <laughs> no, 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 no. Those are those are called UV tattoos. <laughs> UV reactive tattoos. I don't really want any UV tattoos. I don't really want white tattoos. I really want black work. Like, I just want black and white and gray. Or black black and gray tattoos. I'm like, I don't really want any color. I just want to be like a black and white canvas. Also depends on how many times they have to do a Passover. Yeah, that's also true. That that also adds to the pain. I've heard that cover-up tattoos hurt really bad, especially if they're going over spots that have already been done of. That's also cool. Thank you. This is my partner's character, Pierce. I prefer colored tattoos. That's fair. I'm like, I, I love black and white. I just, I'm, I'm a huge line art nerd. So I'm like, I, I love just line art. But I super get the appeal of color. Cause I do also like coloring, but me personally, I'm like, I would way prefer just line work. I don't know how they'll fade. Oh, I want a white tattoo specifically like those nest Neat fossil tattoos look like bones under your skin, but I don't know how they'll fade. I heard that white fades really quickly. Like, I'm not too sure about white, but I heard that it fades really quickly because it's white. <laughs> liner being the bane of my existence at the moment. I live for liner. I'm like, I don't think I had a point in my, in my life where I disliked liner because I just did it so much. Because I was, like, a comics junkie. So, like, like me doing line art really fast. And, like, I also loved manga. So, it was, like, that's, like, all line art and black work. It's, like, that's what I grew up on. So, it's, like, all my everything. This hand is too small. You have to layer white a lot for it to last. Makes sense. Of line art so much same. What about white ink on darker skin tones? I'm not too sure. I am not a tattoo artist. Not yet, I guess, anyway. Right? I so I don't really know how that interaction works. I love doing really bright airbrush green eyes, lots of colors, yeah. I still use that ear trick you taught a while back. Which one? I've taught a lot of ear tricks. <laughs> T 
Tattoo artists won't recommend white on dark skin tones. That's fair. A year ago, I don't know. But what's the ear trick? What is it? <laughs> Which one was it? What's the... <laughs> is it the one where it's the... Between the eyes and the nose? Or is it the one where it's... But like for the inner ear. All the way you do the movement on the hair, it's so fluffy. Yeah, I love fluffy hair. I live for fluffy hair. Oh, wonder if he's amazing as you are. So easily envisioning illustrations in your head. No more it's all just studying. I find that like I do stuff without reference just because like I know where bones go. Even still, I know that like a lot of my poses are still not the most accurate. Like I know they're exaggerated. But it's, it's all practice. Keep going at it, you'll get there. Inner, I think? Yeah, I get you. I... The inner ear trick is nice. A three and a Y. White fades faster than how long the confederacy lasted, which wasn't long. <laughs> Dang, okay. Well, I am Canadian, so I don't know what that entails. Um... playing Animal Crossing while I'm watching this. That's vibes. Can I tell you guys a story? Can I tell you guys a story from something that happened earlier this week? Well, they lasted for years? Oh, okay. Sure to be specific. I see. Can I tell a story? Y'all want a story? Okay. So. Animal Crossing Lego set. Oh my god. So. Can we stop you from telling it? Yeah, I guess so. If you just told me you didn't want to hear it. <laughs> My partner and I celebrated our one year this week. Um, and we went to Niagara as like a as like an anniversary trip, right? And one thing that we went to was this arcade that's in Niagara on Clifton Hill on the Canadian side. Uh, it's called the Great Canadian Midway, for those who do not know. For those who do know place is sick right it's awesome um so we get there and the <laughs> we're playing for a little while and uh, we're kind of just walking around trying to figure out games that we want to play and one of them is like you ever seen like the price is right where there's like the giant like wheel that they gotta spin right and it goes like vertical and they're like spin the wheel and like when you spin it it lands on like a number like a money amount in this case, it's like a like a ticket amount, right? So we decided to play it because no matter what you spin, you always get tickets. Um, so we were like, yeah, why not, right? It's not too many coins. It's not too many tokens. Might as well spin it, right? We got the jackpot amount on the first try. We got a thousand tickets on the first try. <laughs> and I was like... Bro, <laughs> we had to sit there for like 10 minutes while all the tickets printed out. It was nuts. It was so lucky. I was like, yo, <laughs> crazy. Um, while we were waiting for the people started watching us, right? While we were waiting for the tickets to print out, I was like, okay, well, there's another wheel over here. I might as well play this one too. We won another 200 tickets off of the other wheel. <laughs> Which was like the second jackpot on the other wheel. <laughs> so we got two of those wheel jackpots in a row. And I was like, it was crazy. I was so like hyped about it. Like I'm not even, like I'm not even, like it was, it was so sick. Like I loved that dude. Um, it was super lucky. I want a Squishmallow. <laughs> Wonder if it glitched. No, it's just luck. <laughs> Just pure luck. We thought it landed on the four, so then it printed out like four, and then it kept going. And we were like, oh, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, they're not virtual. No, it's the, the physical ones. Yeah, good enough. I am gonna line this just to clean it up and then we can go on to tattoos. One of my local arcade? Yeah! It's the best! Whew. 
how are y'all doing? How's the... Any stories that y'all have? Spooky month stories? Video game achievements? How is the vibe? Because I'm just going to sit here talking. <laughs> but I have a limited amount of things that I can say. You need to hear some stories. It was a cat that showed up in my backyard the other day. What about the other leg? It's just cut off. I don't want to draw the whole thing. I'm like, yeah, we'll just cut that there. <laughs> the vibe is waiting for Pokemon Teal Mask to release already. I haven't played the, the DLC, but I've watched my partner play. It's very cute. I would die for Ogre Bond. I would unalive for, for Ogre Bond. <laughs> Moving out in a couple of weeks. Nice. How's that been going? Cat's birthday was on Friday 13th of October. Pretty spooky. Pretty crazy. Maybe the other leg's in a pool or something. Yeah, yeah. We'll just pretend it's like in a pool or something. I don't know. Dressing up as a female Shaggy for Halloween. This is my style consists of mostly browns and shades of green. Nice. I'm dressing up as Mimikyu, the Pokemon. Care to. I don't want to fight him. Ki okay, Teal Mask spoilers. If anybody is a Pokemon enjoyer, Teal Mask spoilers. I'm gonna say them. He's he's turn he's he's going to the dark side, man. I'm just saying. He's gonna have his villain arc, and it's gonna be epic. I'm so excited. Neighbor's friend destroyed their $800 trampoline pole. No, they had to try and break it again just to fix it. The friend is banned from their house. That's real. I mean, yeah. Stressful, not gonna lie, but it's happy to be out here soon. Nice! Yeah. I still live in my multi-generational household, but luckily I have a I have a very lovely family. It's just a bean who needs a hug. Bro, he needed a hug initially. Now he's going a little nutso, alright? <laughs> he's going a little crazy. He's going a little cuckoo bananas. He's got he got went a little too silly. You can't battle for whatever Pokemon wants to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's folded, yeah. My class today, like my, my second class was so chatty. It was great. I'm like, I, I love chatty classes. So it was like, it was so nice to just have a lot of my students be talking a lot. <laughs> Everybody had their mic on too. It's like, I, I usually, in my classes, I'll just always say like, like, oh, it's like, yeah, you can, oh, what do you call it? It's like, you don't have to keep your mic on. That's totally fine. And it's true. It's like, they don't have to keep their mic on um, if they don't want to. And usually I get students who type in the chat. Um, but I like, I like speaking with my students as well. <laughs> In love with the dude's jaw shape. His name is Pierce. Pierce is our is our Drake Warden Ranger. He's Korn's adoptive father. <laughs> so throughout the campaign, Pierce adopted Korn. For those who have been here long enough to know my character, Korn. Not the biggest on Pokemon anymore. My favorite for forever be Snorlax and Espeon. I love Noivern. I am a Noivern enjoyer. Yeah, Pierce is meant to look pretty androgynous. He's a He's meant to be a bit a bit androgynous, not extremely masculine, not extremely feminine. Totodile. Totodile's a good vibe. We love a good Totodile in this house. Okay. Okay, Gen 2, where are my Chikorita enjoyers? Alright, I love Chico. I love Chikorita. <laughs> I don't care. Okay, I know that she's not good competitively. I know that she's not the best typing. I have the best stats. I love Chikorita. I think Chikorita's so cute. Chico. 
Totodile's so good, though. Totodile is so good. I love the Gen 2 starters. Is Pierce like a heave kind of guy? He doesn't actually use heave pronouns, but yeah, visually, yes. <laughs> Pierce is androgyny, gives me Conan Gray vibes. See, I, I would agree, but I know what Pierce's color palette is. <laughs> <laughs> he's a green man. <laughs> he's green. He's, he's an Eldrin elf. Here, hang on. He's an Eldrin elf, so his uh, his skin tone is green, and he changes he changes based on what emotion he's feeling. So this is Pierce most of the time. His initial reference looked like this, and then over time he's just become fluffier. Um, but yeah, Pierce started out as very very green. Pierce Pierce is like neutral state is like green and then if he's angry he's summer pierce if he's chill he's autumn and if he's really sad he's winter pierce um his dragon is named puddles puddles is a bigger dragon now he can ride on the back of puddles now um which is pretty fun it's a new character yeah pierce is great i love pierce yeah, Pierce is, Pierce is Korn's adoptive father, so. It's a good dynamic they have. Pierce was really fun to design uh, when my partner came to me. He wasn't my partner at the time, but when he, he came to me to ask uh, for help with designing him, he was like, okay, so I want this Eldrin elf character who just, like, he has, like, four different seasons, and I want him to, like, shift the seasons with his emotions. And I was like, okay. So he gave me, like, the concepts for each one. Um, the concept for his canon outfit is, can you make him, like, a how, how to train your dragon character, but, like, not? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I can work with that, I guess. Um, so that's what his canon outfit is, is he kind of looks like a how to train your dragon character, but also not. So he has that kind of, like, aerial sort of viking aesthetic. Puddles, I love puddles. Yeah, puddles. He's a seasonal Pokemon. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna. I'll tell him about that one later. Hiccup is very gender. Hiccup is very gender. Here, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna use send that to my. Partner. So is Pierce. <laughs> Hang on. Let me send this to him as well. He'll like to read these. He's sick right now. <laughs> Cast form human. Bro, I think seasonal. I think like seasonal Pokemon. I think Sawsbuck. Yo, my Gen 5 enjoyers. Okay, I love Gen 5. I live for Gen 5. Yeah, I've I've designed a lot of my partner's characters. Like Hush is another character of his that I designed. It's a little uh, Azamar Sorcerer Rogue. And he's really, really fun to work with. Um, he was like, okay, I want a little Azamar kid who's like... <laughs> I when, I when designing him, he was basically a blank slate. And I was like, okay, well, I need a motif to work off of. Can you give me that? And he's like, I don't know what a motif is. Um, so eventually we came up with like eyes as his motif. And he was very, very buggy. Um, which was really, really fun. So was the tutorial draw it separated and just mesh transform until the vibes feel right? No, Oz. I taught them about cylinders. Hi, Oz, by the way. <laughs> I have a toothless and pride flag shrine on my wall. That's sick. <laughs> Am I a Capricorn? No, I'm a Gemini. The, this, the astrology people are quaking in their boots right now because I said I'm a Gemini. I'm just saying. I love the dragon so much what inspired the designs. I've always wanted to make an animal design like that, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, my partner gave me a wyvern. <laughs> he was like, he was like, uh, I was like, so what kind of dragon is Puddles? He's like, oh, he's a wyvern. That was it. <laughs> That's literally it. Um, I just really like drawing dragons. So it was off the top of my head. Um, a little bit inspired by just other general dragon designs. Um... Gemini, I thought you were Canadian. Um, 
Also Gemini. Hey, there you go. Um, <clears throat> I know nothing about astrology, so I just like I don't know. Gemini is just a cool sounding word. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> uh. Oh, dragons. Dragon inspired things. Um, when I designed Corn's village, those dragons were inspired by various things, like a. Corn's dad was very crocodilian, alligator-ish. Um, and then I got inspiration for, like, antler teeth from, like, this artist that I really love, Busagi. Um, and I was like, yo, I need to try this <laughs> on something. Um, so that was a fun thing that I did at one point. I, I should just show you what they look like instead of just talking about them. What's the rarest astrology sign? I have no clue. What is the rarest month to be born in? <laughs> I guess is the is the question. Is it a Fiatus? Is that the most rare one? Because it's like so hard to get into. Here. So these are the other dragonborn that I've designed. Right. So Corn's dad. Like the antler teeth were inspired by somebody like else's kind of concept. Petri was inspired by goats. A lot of goats and kind of the crotchety old woman vibe. Callisto was just me like, okay, I really want to move into dragons. And I was like, I really wanted a more... Like, I didn't really... Like, Veli, Veli is the most standard European dragon, dragonborn that I designed. Um, and then when I moved into Callisto, I wanted her to really, like, not feel... Like a traditional dragon, I guess. It's like kind of the same thing. Petri is very crocodilian as well. Um, because I, I really wanted all these dragons to like, if you took one glance at them, you wouldn't be able to tell which one was male or female. And like, that was like what I wanted. I'm like, I don't want any of these guys to ring as male or female. That was my biggest pet peeve. Whenever I see dragonborn designs, they're like, oh, it's like, this is lady. I give her hourglass design. Like, no, stop. <laughs> Shut up. Um, so Petri is a woman, Callisto's a woman, Veli's a woman, uh, Kalthi's a little girl, Lachesis and Cubico are men. Um, but I'm like, I was like, I need, I need that androgyny. I don't want them to look like they belong to any specific gender. Hello, welcome in. Antler teeth. Antler teeth are so cool. I love playing Dragonborns. These guys look awesome. Love the gender neutral vibe you went for. Thank you. Yeah, I my my little Dragonborn, my little Dragonborn corn. I love I love my little boy. He's he's very good. But yeah, that's that's those are the Dragonborn that he grew up around. Love your art. Thank you. And Charles's characters are sick. Yeah, man. That's the vibe. They're like Spyro Elder Dragons, but better. I have played one Spyro game. I, okay, I've played one Spyro game and I really want to finish it, but I have no clue where the cartridge is. <laughs> so I can't play it. <laughs> is this stream three or four hours this time? No, no, no. It's just, uh, we have like one hour left. It'll be ending at five EST. I, can. I love how you incorporate clothing onto the dragon. It's so vibey. Thank you. One of my characters have very androgynous vibes the way I draw them at the moment. I don't know what happened, but my style doesn't seem to want to select one gender. <laughs> I feel... What's the reasoning behind the name of your channel? I think it sounds really cool. That's a good question. <laughs> it's really not my channel. So if you didn't know... Uh, Wayne Canvas is not just my channel. Um, I am one of the streamers. Uh, Wayne Canvas is a company. We are an art school online. Um, I am one of the instructors. I've been around since Wayne Canvas was once a brick and mortar. So it was at one point a, just a physical school that you could go to. Um, and then COVID hit. And now it is no longer a physical school that you can go to. Um, so it is online only. Um, but Wayne Canvas has been around for longer than me. So uh, you're going to have to ask Faye why... Uh, you can you could technically ask if you join the discord or join one of the classes take a look at the classes that we offer yes I teach two right before this stream 
We need the I love mom tattoo. Absolutely not. Wish I came here the first hour, but I was animating. That's fine. I was here. Teaching. And it is always available to watch after the stream is finished. Shameless plug. It's my job, bro. It's a morning for me. Good thing to wake up to. Heck yeah. It is getting close to the evening for me. I didn't feed my Snorlax lunch. Or did I? I don't remember. I should not be checking Pokemon sleep right now. <laughs> Pierce! Pierce! Hello, Crow. There he is! It's Scarecrow Sketch, Pierce's player! <laughs> Everybody point and say hi. <laughs> Are you feeling any better? Man of the hour. What streams were are you looking forward to the most this month? Probably the stream where I draw... Oh, I didn't feed him lunch. Probably the streams where we I draw y'all's characters with Iggy. I'm excited to do that one. I love the streams where it's more than one person. <laughs> Pointing right now. Feeling a good 60% better. That's good. Poor crow left Canada dying. <laughs> You and Iggy drawing spooky OCs will be the best. I'm very excited for that one because I, I love streaming with Iggy. I love streaming with Josh too. I love streaming with both of them because they're both just good vibes. Club streams are always a good time. They are such a good time. I'm obsessed with little satyrs. Pierce is giving off that energy. Pierce is an elf. <laughs> I have a satyr character. His name is Cliff. Thank you, Chad. I'm slowly recovering. He's slowly recovering. I'll make sure to be in disguise so it isn't nepotism. <laughs> okay. I love satyrs so much. I also love satyrs. My satyr character, he's a reindeer. His name is Cliff. He's a, he's a big man. Do they know about puddles? Yes, I did talk about puddles. I talked about the entire Pierce design process. How you just told me, like, uh, I kind of want him to look like a, like a How to Train Your Dragon character, but, like, also not. And I was like, great. can drop you at any given moment vibe with that smile. Pierce is the dad of the group, so which is probably not what you were expecting. So in our in our D&D campaign, Pierce is like the leader slash like dad of our party. He is quite literally my character's dad, but in terms of like just as the full party, he is like the, the party dad. He has always been one of like the party dad. Or at least one of the party dads. The other party dad is dead. <laughs> so. <laughs> makes me upset. Dragon dad. Dragon dad. Fluffy hair is moody. Yes, sir. 
What's the best D&D class today, or what is everyone's favorite? I mean, as of right now, my favorite one that I like, I've played a few now, I think my favorite is still Barbarian, just because I like martial classes. Um, second favorite easily was Monk. I love playing a Monk. Um, Artificer's up there, too. I'm not big on spellcasters, um, but I loved playing an Artificer. I loved playing a Monk. Um, monk was a little more complicated than Artificer for me. <laughs> but I did really like it. Um, but yeah, I I, I love barbarians because I do nothing. I don't do too much, <laughs> so I can focus on RP instead. Bard is so much fun. I'm I'm getting ready to play a bard. So warlock has the best variety. I, I have two warlock characters and I've played neither. So one day I will play one of them. One of these days. One of these days I'll play Kingsley. <laughs> Druid is top tier. We love a good Druid in this house. I have a backup character who's a, who's a druid. Interested in elven type roles and bards and changelings? Ah, elves. There's so many elves, dude. You can pick any elf. <laughs> There are Eldrin elves, there are high elves, there are wood elves, there are drow slash dark elves. You got so many different elves to pick from. <laughs> Why is he in underwear? Because we're going to be drawing tattoos, my G. You kind of can't see tattoos underneath clothes. <laughs> so many elves. And there's so many elves. <laughs> but I love a good elf. Of all, like, the characters that I draw, like, I haven't played too much of a variety. I haven't really noticed a crazy difference in playing either any of them. But my favorite ones to draw easily are Tabaxi. I love drawing Tabaxi. The cat people, they're the best. Because I, I just like drawing cats. So it's, like, it's really fun to mess with that anatomy. So close second is Dragonborn, because I just love drawing dragons. Um, but I just love the challenge and the fun of a Tabaxi. I'm loving the variety of elves I can use, yeah. Play a lot of gnomes because they're so cute. <laughs> I only know one gnome character, and he is not cute. <laughs> I feel like there used to be more elves that have gotten lost in 5e. They just merged. Too many elves. Hopefully the scales never cover up his tattoos because they're the best, yeah. Yeah, if the scales reach up to here, the cover of the shoulder tattoo, very upsetting. I mean, the magical tattoo, though, wouldn't that just, like, go over top of the scales? I have a key destination travel spot for vacations. You go to Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. It is so fun. Perhaps. I've never been to the East Coast, so perhaps one day I will go. I know the family wants to go to the East Coast at some point. We just went to the... Or, sorry, not the East Coast, the West Coast. Um, we just came back from the East Coast. That's where we went. We went to, we went to BC during the summer, um, so that was a lot of fun. Probably, to be honest. Yeah, like, it's a magical one, right? Like, I, I don't know what to... I don't know about the... Oh, well, no, both of your tattoos are magical. They're el It's an eldritch tattoo. <laughs> Arakakra? I love a good Arakakra. My best friend plays an Arakakra. I love Lotus. <laughs> My best friend plays an Arakakra named Lotus. Lotus is so good. Oh, the Tengu race in Pathfinder 2? He muttered Brave Oh, yeah! Tengu! Yo, I was planning on playing a Tengu at some point. And he would walk around with a little radio, and that's how he would speak. A la Bumblebee. <laughs> you got a good point there, yeah. Magical runes as tattoos is such a cool thing to draw. Yes! One of our party members, Atros. Uh, Atros, he's a, he's a rune child, so he has, like, runes as part of his magic. But he's very, like, star-themed, so he his runes are all constellations. He recently used those runes to protect Corn from a, a giant, like, hill giant. So that was fun. That was a fun combat. I love harpy avian characters, especially barn owls. You're in luck! There is quite literally a DD d race called an owlin. <laughs> they, are, they are owl people. <laughs> really like astrology, mainly the stars and planets. Yeah, like the... So you like astronomy. 
astronomy is a little different from astrology. Astrology is like the zodiacs and stuff. Astronomy is like the, the physical planets and stuff. Really want to make an avian character? Yeah! They, you, can, you can pick between Arakakra and Kenku and Owlin. There's lots of different bird characters. Astronomy. Yeah, no, you're all good. Star-themed characters I love to see. Heck yes. Atros is a good vibe. Astronomy is cool. Astrology is astronomy fanfiction. <laughs> are there any non-hostile bug D and D races? Yes, the Thrycreen. The Thrycreen are new. Um, they are the they're the bug people. Um, Thrycreen are new. They're they're new bug people. Um, I don't think they're finished yet though. But I mean, you can play as them. There's like another new one called a Plasmoid, and the Plasmoids are pretty funny. I have, like, a hundred characters I don't even get a chance to play just because I love making characters. Literally same. No, I don't I don't have a hundred, but I've got a good chunk. Like, I've played Korn, I've played Strider, I've played Rai, and I've played Scuttle. So I've played half of my D&D characters. So this group right here I have played. The rest of the four I have not. Um, but yeah, this, this grouping right here I have played. These guys I've all played. Um, and then everybody else I have not played. Yeah, no race is exactly hostile because you never have to play a hostile character because of their race. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. It's it, it's quite literally just picking, like, your skin, basically. <laughs> In-game. It's picking whatever skin you're going to be wearing. Thrycreen are done. They're just relegated to Spelljammer. Gotcha. Why not make him a bit more muscular? Because he's not muscular. <laughs> Pierce is not a muscular character. <laughs> Pierce is a twig. <laughs> well, he's he's like he's he's fit. He's fit. He has an eleven strength, but he's not he's not crazy strong. Corn has a has a higher strength than Pierce does. So Corn, I draw quite muscular. Yeah, I am waiting for that perfect campaign for for Kingsley. I mean, I've gotten a, a campaign for Etalan, so I'm just waiting for that one to start. Surprisingly, I've never played D&D before, but my teacher does. I'm so tempted to. Dude, play it. It's the best. Find a group. Have fun. D&D's a good time. It's really... I love... Like, D&D gave me such a wide variety of things to design and things to illustrate. And D&D has really helped, like... Helped me expand my illustrative palette, in a way. Um, so it's been really fun to... Because cause there's so many different concepts and different races to illustrate in D&D, right? And they're not all humanoid either, you know? Like, there's like I get like a Thrycreen is a bug, right? <laughs> you have Dragonborn, you have Tabaxi, right? I was designing a Tabaxi earlier just for fun. Where'd it go? Oh, was it not here anymore? Because I was showing off all these other designs. Um... It's in, it's in a different thing. It's in here, isn't it? Oh, here it is. I was designing a tabaxi for fun, right? Because it's just so fun to draw, like, different anatomy. Like, it's, it like, with tabaxi, they're cats, right? They're cat people. So I, like, really, like, the, the shoulders, you can't really see them, but they do this, right? And it's, like, really pushing that cat anatomy. By comparison to leaning them towards like a person so it's like that it was it was really fun to illustrate this i was also practicing using uh the lasso tool to shade and using different textured brushes so that was really fun um to just kind of really quickly design this and sketch them out i love tabaxi dude i've been playing around with other systems trying to find some good ideas to take back DD. yeah I can't believe Pierce is gonna die next session to Tiamat now. <laughs> Thinking of starting a DD group, not sure I'd be a good GM though. You just gotta practice. If you'd wanna be a GM, then you can, but you can also just find a GM. 
Maybe somebody else wants to be your, be your GM slash DM. Okay, I gotta I gotta speed this up. <laughs> it's gonna be lines only, but I'm like I'm taking forever because we're talking so much. Okay. I love DMing. Yeah. Yeah, because right now we're not really talking about, like, tattoos, because uh, I haven't been drawing tattoos. I'm just, like, trying to fill in the space between when we actually get to the tattooing portion. I think my first CD game will have been eight years ago exactly in a month or so. That's sick. I have been playing for not very long, so <laughs> it will have been, like, a year or two. Forty minutes? More like fifty minutes. <laughs> or forty-nine, I guess, if you want to be like super pedantic about it. Crow, you don't mind me giving Pierce just a bunch of like unofficial tattoos, do you? I don't know if you're still here. <laughs> Pierce has two tattoos. Two canon tattoos. Force Jesse. Thank you. That's generic nerd. D&D &D was the opposite thing for me to get into in middle school. That's fair. I never liked the idea of RPing, so I never got into D&D &D until I was an adult. Chris tattoo and stretch any tattoo he wants. Anything is free game. But you know, that's real. That's very true. Bring out the tattoo guns and just go wild, pretty much. It is a request stream, so you guys can, once we actually get to the tattooing portion, you guys can just request tattoos to put on him. Uh, please note that I am able to say no to anything that you say. <laughs> so if I don't want to do it, then I will not do it. Um, but I will do as many as I can. I'll also just be starting out by giving him his cannon tattoo. Right, that's all the lines. Nice. Oh, I forgot the other side of his arm. LOL. <laughs> that's why I was like, something's wrong here. Then I realized. That's why. There we go. Not liking the idea of RPing, that's what AD&D was for? I don't even know what that is. But here's the thing, my favorite part about D&D now is the RP, because I don't really love combat. So I am, like, very RP-heavy in the way that I like to play. Because it's just fun to play as Korn now. Pierce makes up for less tattoos with his random scales, yeah. So this is like a Tiamat curse then. That's crazy. Oh, right. He has claws now. He has claws on all of his nails now. That's crazy. This poor man. Wait. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, I am a, I am a barbarian. I hit twice and I, and I tease the villain and I, I, End my turn. <laughs> yeah. That was poor luck. You need some surgery. <laughs> He has a proper, like, dragon toes now, too, which is, like, nuts. But I'm too lazy to draw the full dragon toes. Uh... I have a stub. It's just a straight-up line. Bro, I just could not be bothered. <laughs> I'll be honest. 
Okay. So first one that I'm going to draw is just this cannon tattoo because it just makes sense to do that. So this is the actual tattoo that Pierce has on his shoulder. Yeah, D&D replies re relies on combat a lot as a system, yeah. <laughs> Core's job to suck up all the big damage and just take a nuke to bring him down. My poor boy has so much health. <laughs> I went down to half health for the first time last session and we've been playing for like almost two years now. good fitting shoes will be a nightmare or does he walk in sandals now no 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 he still walks in the same boots i don't know how but he does it <laughs> ain't no way it's been almost two years yeah man it's it was like because we started in april of like what 2022 2021 you'll be able to check either it's almost been two years or it's almost three years now you're gonna have to look because i don't remember if you just go back, go to the general chat and find, like, the first send. Like, the first sent message. Yeah. We have a lot of homebrew. My corn is pretty homebrewed. He's homebrewed, but in the way that's, like, very RP. Like, it's an RP homebrew. In terms of mechanics, he's not much different. I know that Sorin, my best friend's character, is crazy homebrewed. Okay. Come on. Hold for me. Thank you. Right, so the easiest thing you can do digitals is you can just kind of warp it to match whatever the form is that you are trying to illustrate. And you'll kind of get it from there. All right. Tattoo requests. <laughs> Socks now have holes because of his nails. Maybe he should get some sandals now. It's a bit of homebrew. The season shifting so fast. Big link to Puddle's collar. Yeah. Time to request some tattoos. Do you guys want to see cat tattoo a cat? Sawsbuck? Sawsbuck is pretty, pretty funny, actually. A smaller version of this drawing. I hope you know that because you've just you've chosen a cat, I'm gonna tattoo scribbles on him. Give him an off the wall tattoo, like you just walk into a parlor and points at a super generic. Wall. Oh, like a like a generic flash tattoo? Yeah, I can do that. That's kind of funny. Live, <laughs> laugh, love. <laughs> Chains around his arm. You want to give him the Sorin? LOL. Even without warping, you kind of see what I mean. Just kind of like a flatten it out in some areas. Sawsbuck is really funny though. I think I'm I, I really like the Sawsbuck idea. A tiny corn tattoo. Okay, wait, corn first, because that makes sense. Okay, I'm not even gonna bother trying to. A 
Miss Transformer vibes. The spear's getting scribbles tatted on his arm. It's so funny to think about, though. He lost a bet. Pierce getting corn tatted on him just kind of makes sense, though. I'll be honest. kind of have to f finesse it to figure out where it feels most natural. He also bit the scribbles. Give him swirly cloud tattoos? Yeah, like the ones the Jinx has. I like those. Those ones are pretty cool. I'm not too sure what the Jinx ones look like, but I think that that's like the Ak <laughs> one of the Akatsuki like <laughs> clouds. Hang on, I'm gonna lighten this a little bit. Just a little bit, so they're not completely fresh kind of vibe. Um. Corn's face in the middle of his chest is hilarious. Just like, it's like a full, okay, wait, I love the Saws book. Give me a second. Because Pierce is just Saws book as a character, I'll be honest. We'll go with, we'll go with Spring Saws book. Because, actually, no, we'll go with Summer Saws book because it looks like Spring Pierce. <laughs> want him back. Just saying Akatsuki made my brain buffer. Did I say it wrong? It's supposed to be like Akatsuki. Not the reindeer, lol. <laughs> Cherry blossom flowers, true. I could do that. Akatsuki. Akat- Akatsuki. Okay. Oh, wait! The quote-unquote reindeer! Yo, I totally forgot about that stream. The clouds, yeah. Midnight- Midnight National Geographic! <laughs> Thrill corn. Oh, corn? No, corn is my character. I'm so sorry. For those of you who have not been here before, and I keep mentioning corn here, hang on. Corn is my character. Corn is a DD character that I play as. Hang on. This is what corn is supposed to look like with his cape around his back. This is what corn looks like now. Uh, like, in terms of, like, what his outfit looks like right now. Um, but he's- he's a little cheerier now, so his eyes are usually like this. Um, but when he's upset, he looks like this. Um, my poor boy is very, very traumatized. But, like, he's not special. <laughs> boy has become a man, technically, because he learned that he's, like, 16. Now he's 17. Been through a lot, yeah. My poor boy has indeed been through a lot. Car, are you still here? Are you gonna stream? It's definitely Akatsuki. Is it Akatsuki? Did you watch Naruto through the games like Dragon Ball? No, I read Naruto, so I never actually heard how Ak Akatsuki was pronounced. Um, I have never watched the. I've watched two, maybe two episodes of the Naruto anime. Um, and it was, like, the first two episodes of the entire anime, so I never actually met them. Um, but I did- I read all of Naruto. I didn't actually watch it. Oh 
<laughs> but yeah, I've been getting a lot of Pokemon drawing practice. I have a character named Crow, so whatever you say, Crow, I think you're talking about him. No, I'm talking about Scarecrow Sketch and shit. We all call him Crow. He's the one who owns this character. This is Pierce's player. Do you not believe it? <laughs> what did somebody else say? What were some of the things that people said? I heard cherry blossoms. Probably should not sure if my head is hecka hurting. Yeah, I get you. Take it easy, you're still sick. just makes sense. Give him a tattoo of a jar of eyeballs? Yeah, I can do that. That makes sense. <laughs> Which Naruto village would this character be from? Because your village symbols would make good tattoos. Crow? <laughs> Making a low-key shiny Saturday basculants only. <laughs> Crow's gonna end you. <laughs> If Crow chose to hate an easier to hunt shiny, I'd be I'd be trying to get the negatives constantly. <laughs> Is Basculin really hard to hunt? I didn't know. I mean I guess so, because he's in the water and he's like an aggressive Pokemon, right? Are there any any other requests for tattoos? He has to be from Shimogakura because it's carved from Frost. He's from the Twin Peaks. It's true. It's true. I don't know what the symbol for that one is. I will look it up. Hello. Shimogakura. It's like the, 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 the four circles, right? Symbol. Yeah, it's four circles. Chubby cat eating toast. <laughs> A cloud tat. Little row of dots spiral slowly getting smaller. I don't know, I looked it up and it's just like bup, 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 bup. <laughs> just kinda funny. I love chubby cat eating toast. I'm sorry, there's just something very cute about that. I have been playing this mobile game and I've been obsessed. I have been obsessed. It's called, um, Usagi Shima, it's a, it's an idle game, I D L E, an idle game, where you just create a little town and bunnies visit you. It is the cutest thing ever. Do a wisp of snow going down the whole leg? I could do that. Yeah. Wings of some sort. I could do wings. I'm gonna do wings across the chest. I'm just letting you know that. Live, laugh, love. Oh, yeah, live, laugh, love. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't worry, chat. Live. That's just live. No, 
Let's put a block on Love. Yes. <laughs> Live, laugh, learn, go. No, Live, Laugh, Love is so fun. This is such a funny tattoo. Hang on. Live, Laugh, Love. We'll put it on the leg. Wouldn't it be so funny if it was on the inner thigh? It's going on the inner thigh. Just because I think that's funny. This feels like a joke tattoo. Hundred percent got it as a joke. <laughs> Making it upside down makes it funnier too. Why would I seem like that, Oz? Huh? <laughs> um. There was a tattoos thing that was here that was cool. Uh. Oh yeah, the wings. The wings across the chest. Which does just kind of feel like a like a tattoo that Pierce would get. They would be of Puddles' wings. Knuckle tattoos. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> Somebody said a smoke tattoo, and like, you know, you don't know, understand why it matches, but it does. I do kind of want to do one of those cool, like. Give him Law's death finger tattoos. Can you give him a little goblin being mad sitting in front of a sandwich on his ankle? Just like yours? <laughs> like your tattoo? <laughs> Do you want to send me a picture of it? A skull of some sort? Perhaps. Now want to see my rendition? Okay, I can do that. Oh shoot, then I gotta move this around then, not here. I hope you know that when you say little goblin, I'm putting scuttle on his ankle. Wait, that's hilarious. Why does Crow show off Shenron? That tattoo's way funnier. Because <laughs> it is on my ankle and not my forearm. Crow does not wear... He does not wear shorts.
here we go. Angry in front of the sandwich. The ribbon that says bottles and corn. I do not know Law's finger death tattoos. I will look them up. When you're also drawing tattoos on somebody, you need to think of the end, like the angle that whatever it is that you're drawing is on. The Wayne Canvas logo? That's such product placement. <laughs> Carl, I know you said you wanted the chains, like Soren's chains. I can do that. So it's not too bad. It's also easy. Okay, but it's a great idea. Okay, yeah, but I feel awkward doing that, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> a rock with googly eyes? <laughs> Pretend Wing Canvas paid him 20 gold to tattoo the Wing Canvas logo on him. Would Pierce take that? I feel like he wouldn't. <laughs> um, a tattoo across the side of his foot? Bro, tattoos on your feet hurt so much. <laughs> Hang on, I saw something that was better. Law's death tattoos, that's right. 50 gold at least. Oh, it's just death across the fingers. Okay, yeah, I can do that. A gecko across the foot, Pierce can take it. I'll be honest, I don't think he can. <laughs> Ooh, a mimic tattoo! Wait, that's cute. The mimic is gonna be a chef's hat. It's not gonna be like our traditional. Because Pierce is a chef. It's gonna be a chef's hat instead of our traditional. Um. Chest. This is Pierce after he's been to prison. We've been we've been pretty close to getting to prison. No, wait, we have been put in prison. We've been put in a jail cell before. Put in a jail cell. We showed up in a jail cell. That was like the beginning of the campaign. What would they go to prison for, is the question? Arson. Arson, destruction of property, murder, anything, really. Um, defacing a company?
Are we good now? Are we okay? <laughs> you think we're back? Are we good now, though? Are we good? Yeah, it's good now? Okay. Me apologies. I don't know what's up. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good now? Okay. Y'all want to reload? See if that helps. Maybe. <laughs> Mike Heim feeds guilty on account of being a silly little guy. Mimi cute tattoo. <laughs> Sponge crab. I cannot be blamed for being a seer, a mere silly being. Right, any other, any other requests? Comic Sans that reads, I became a dad and all I got was this lame tattoo. They, that's so funny. Hang on. I have a text tool. Charles Entertainment Cheese. <laughs> but why? So that's actually so funny. Hang on. I love this one. <laughs> that's so funny. Across the top of this thigh so you can see it. Oh, this is gonna be a really good example of seeing how it warps here because of this text. It's because this is curved. Because it's off to the side here. We really want this to feel like it is wrapping around the leg. So the grid is good because it gives us these anchor points where we can really see how it's gonna be curving. That's so funny, actually. I love this one. He's a text tool. Would have thought we'd see the day, yeah. Text on each leg. It was different. This one is upside down, though. 10 out of 10, tat. I'll be honest, Oz. I actually... A skull. Okay. I know you wanted a skull. I don't know what, what skull. I don't know why Saul's book is still here, too. Let's do, let's do. 
I don't know what this would look like, but... If we want a skull, it's gotta be like a dragon of some kind. Let's look at a dinosaur skull and work from there. Now let's go with a raptor. And then we can work from there. <laughs> Funny live, laugh, love upside down implies that it's only for him to look at. Just for himself. It's true. It's just for him. We came back to this one. Which one? I became a dad and all I got was this lame tattoo. <laughs> have a dragon skull in your room so disappointed yeah no unfortunately i do not Ethically sourced dinosaur skulls sourced from a farm raised dinosaur. No. Unfortunately, no. A good place to find all your D D fam drawings. If not, would you consider making a thread in Discord of all your D D arts? There is one illustration on my Twitter that just has everybody. <laughs> um, if you mean my characters, in terms of like the characters for my campaign, then no. Um, you're gonna have to find those because I don't really talk about them all the time <laughs> online. These characters fight a lot, right? How about a plaster tattoo? It doesn't help heal anything, but it's there anyway. A plaster tattoo? You mean like a band-aid? I don't know what a plaster is, other than like the material. Clippy would be kind of funny. I see this much variety of two tattoos, it's glorious. This is the kind of like tattoo, like thing that I would like. This, these are the kind of like sleeves and like the amount of variety of tattoos that I would want. Um... Wait. <laughs> Band aid is a brand name? That's true, but like I've never heard them called a plaster before. But yeah, that is kind of funny though. <laughs> you just like a like a bandage tattooed on you is kind of funny. This is kind of funny. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I feel like Pierce would be the kind of person to get like a constellation tattoo to like match with Soren. Is there a is there a dragon constellation? Dragon Constellation. Is there actually one? There is Draco. Let's copy paste this bad boy. And it's sponsorship now. Now. Yeah, 
have nine minutes left. Thank you. I'm not even gonna bother, like, try to draw this on my own. It's a constellation. You can't copyright a constellation. <laughs> Let's just connect the dots. Stream is ending soon? Yes. Eight minutes now. Corb! Oh my god, you're so right. I will indeed push my hyperfixations onto my partner's character. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they did make Fire Kirby in Forgotten Lands very dragony, so he could just get that. Yeah. This is a good curb, dude. I don't want Dragon Curb Fire Kirby as a tattoo, but I do want Morpho Knight Kirby as a tattoo. <laughs> Thought Kirby went the way of your Hunter Hunter interest. Oz, I have been a Kirby fan since 2009. <laughs> I Kirby is the thing that I have like just never gotten out of who's my favorite character like of all time or like in, in like, who came the character of who kirby for life kirby for life I appreciate the reminder, Evie. I love Kirby games. My favorite's Waddle Dee. I live for Waddle Dee. Like, I love a good Waddle Dee. Trust me. Love a good Waddle Dee. I love Waddle Dee. My favorite boss is Marks. In ter like, in terms of just everything, I love Marks. He's just so good. Corby. Little mushrooms would be cute. Little mushrooms would be cute, actually. Hang on, I'm gonna do that too. Made me feel old saying 2009 was super long ago. It is, but still makes me feel old. <laughs> I was eight years old in 2009, so I mean, it was a pretty long time ago for me. I'm in my 20s now. The Jesse TV? It is. <laughs> Jesse TV is so funny. Hi Kay, we're putting a bajillion tattoos on Pierce. Do you have a do you have a request that you would like? Do you like this one that's on his knee? I became a dad and all I got was this lame tattoo. That was pretty funny. <laughs> we're just putting a bunch of tattoos on Pierce. Pierce. Who's older, dude? 
Oh, out of my characters? I can't choose a favorite. I mean, my current fixation of my characters, I love Korn. Um, I love the comic sense. Thank you. Corn is corn is my everything, but I cannot pick of my favorite children. You take a direction into Cottage Car now. The character is so cultured. Pierce feels like of all the characters that are in this campaign, Pierce is probably the closest to Cottage Car. Oh, you know the thorny wreath ring is so true. Hang on, let's do. See that around his wrist, because that kind of makes sense. So true. Just tweeted a picture with Kirby at a birthday cake. I said 31 for a solid hour. I fully thought it was about Jess. No, it was Kirby's 31st anniversary. He's an old man. Heck yeah, I know this man. Heck yeah. Hard to believe he was completely tattooed was like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, I can just like, here, watch this. Whoop. And just get rid of him and put him back on there. <laughs> Your favorite tactic so far? Probably the I became a dad and all I got was this lame tattoo. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Older than Kirby. Oh my god. <laughs> Koi B. Gonna make a tattoo draw pile? Dude, that'd be so fun actually. Should make a thread in the Discord dedicated to tattooed characters that everyone has. Heck yeah! Go for it. I don't have to be the one that has to make it. <laughs> y'all can y'all can do whatever you want in that Discord. I mean, like, uh, that that goes with the rules, of course. I don't want to make more more work for our lovely mods. Last second, last second tattoo request. We've got just tiny amounts of space left. I've got a little bit over here, a bit on the foot, a bit on the thigh here. No. <laughs> A muffin. Yo, mama. Just draw my mother. <coughs> Cute little steak. Is that your mom? Yeah. Oh, it's a muffin. <laughs> Belly button flower. That's pretty funny, actually. I like that. Oh my god, what if it's like... Pledge to cheese. A child of his in every ab. Like a shell. <laughs> oh, bubble. Oh, you made a puddles tattoo? Shoot. I mean, these are puddles as wings. I could just attach puddles onto them. Is there a reference to each puddle's element? There is not. But I mean, there's like a sauce buck here and a cherry blossom here. I haven't gotten anything for winter. Somebody did ask for the, or no, it was Crow who mentioned like one of the Naruto villages, the snowy one. 
I look like that. I forgot to put that in there. Oh, is it time? It is indeed time. All right, everybody. Thank you also so much for joining. That is five o'clock. That is where stream will end for today. Um, if you did not know, don't know too much about the studio. Hi, if you're new here, um, welcome in. If you don't know too much about us, we're not just a YouTube channel. We're also an art studio. So be sure to check us out. Check out the classes that we offer, wingcanvas.com. Um, I am one of the instructors. There are lots of lovely instructors. All of our streamers are instructors. If you'd like to book any of our classes, there are spots available. So please be sure to check out the classes at wingcanvas.com. I teach digital illustration and I teach a mentorship course where you can curate the course to yourself. So if you are building portfolios, both of those are pretty great. If you would like to um, check out the file that is available here, the JPEGs, if you want to check out anything, um, any of the lessons, stuff like that, you're going to have to join our Discord, exclamation boy Discord, join, um, talk with other artists, talk with other people in there, get some, make some friends learn meet some other artists meet some other friends um and you can really you know have some fun with some other people but if you'd like anything that has if you would like our working files if you'd like our layers you're gonna have to join our patreon patreon or become a youtube member to get your working file once a month um and then there are other things on our patreon you get discounts on your classes um you get early recordings from youtube you get class recordings as well so be sure to check that out as well. Uh, this Sunday, what are we doing this Sunday? This Sunday, ooh, if that's running slow. Sorry, that transition was not good. I don't know what happened there. This Sunday, you guys are gonna be drawing fabric with patterns. That's probably gonna be with Iggy, right? Yes, you're going to be with Iggy this Sunday. He's going to be teaching you how to draw fabric with patterns. And then next week, Saturday, you are going to be drawing. You're going to be working with Josh in animating fire. So Josh will be animating fire with you guys. And showing you how to do his process through that. All right, with that being said, though, thank you all so, so much for joining. And I'll see y'all in a couple of weeks. Actually, no. Yeah, I'll see y'all in a couple of weeks. Au revoir. Bye-bye.